Now we need to multiply whole numbers by a thousand. And we can do that by writing three zeros on the end of our number. So notice there's three zeros in a thousand, so we write three zeros on the end of our number. So six times a thousand is six thousand, because six times one is six, but then if we have three n zeros in a multiplication question, we need three n zeros in our answer. Now we have 78 times a thousand. That's 78,000, so 78 with three zeros on the end. 78 times one is 78, but multiplying by a thousand means we need to write these three zeros on the end of our answer. And finally, we have 201 times 1,000. That's 201,000. 201 times 1 is 201, so 201 times 1,000 is 201,000. Now it's important again to understand that multiplying by 1,000, we can write three zeros on the end only if the numbers that we're multiplying are whole numbers rather than decimals. If we have decimals, we're going to need to use a different method. But to see why this works, let's think back to 6 times 1,000. So we started with 6, and multiplying by 1,000 is like multiplying by 10, and then by 10 again, and then by 10 for a third time, because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And that's why, to multiply by 1,000, we can move the digit or digits, three squares or three place values to the left. So now the six has moved to our thousands column, so we need zeros in our hundreds, tens and ones to make it clear that the six stands for six thousands. Then we had 78 times a thousand, and if we move the digits, three place values to the left, write zeros in our empty hundreds, tens and ones columns, that gives us our answer 78,000. And finally, we had 201. If we move the digits three squares to the left, then we've multiplied by a thousand. But to show the place values that these digits are now in, we need to write zeros in our empty squares to give us our answer 201,000.